Good evening. The makers of the new Rinso bring you the Amos and Andy Show with their guest tonight, the lovely star of the new RKO radio picture, Tender Comrade, Miss Ginger Rogers. Amos and Andy's theme is the perfect song every Friday night. Now, my theme for tonight is Rinso Certainly Gets Around. However, Amos and Andy are ready and waiting, and here they come with their guest, Miss Ginger Rogers. Our story opens tonight not with Amos and Andy up in Harlem, but in Pritchard's department store downtown. We find Mrs. Henry Van Porter walking down one of the aisles approaching the gift department. Behind the counter is the sales girl, Miss Ginger Rogers. Something I can do for you? Uh, I was looking for a pair of bookends. Something not too gaudy and yet smart and chic. Uh, has you got anything for a dollar? Well, yes, we have these glass ones here. They're on sale at a dollar. Oh, yes. Uh, yes, they is charming, ain't they? They're a very good value. They're made by a very fine firm in San Diego. Oh, imported. <laughs> I'll take a pair of them, please. All right, that'll be a dollar three. Do you wish to take them with you? No, this is a sin. I want them wrapped as a gift and sent to Mr. Andrew H. Brown at this address here. Fine, I'll see that it gets in the afternoon delivery. Oh, uh, what time should that arrive there? Well, I'm not sure. Our truck driver's getting a permanent wave today. She may be a little late. <laughs> uh, by the way, has you got any more of them plastic picture frames that you advertised last week? Not a one of them left. The way the women went for those things... You'd have thought Frank Sinatra came with every frame in person. But we've got a new shipment coming in tomorrow morning, so be sure to be here early. So, Kingfish, I started on a regular job. Brother Crawford done got it for me, and I'm going to work. Well, Andy, I wouldn't feel too bad about the thing. You might get a break and get fired at the end of the first week. <laughs> No, no, there ain't no chance of that. And what's more, I was really anxious to start on this job. Uh, when is you supposed to start, Andy? When does it happen? January the 1st. I start in the supply department at the Harlem Hospital. Oh, well, by that time, you'll be yourself again. I guarantee that by January the 1st, this whole crazy feeling will leave you and go away. Wait a minute, Kingfish. I don't want it to go away. Other people's goes to work, and I'm going to try it, too. Andy, do you know what you is letting yourself in for? Do you know that if you take a job, you liable to have to get up at 7 o'clock every morning? Well, what's wrong with that? Other people do it. Listen, Brother Andrew, 7 o'clock was never meant for a getting up hour. <laughs> the only reason they got that number 7 printed on the clock is so there won't be no blank space between 6 and 8. That's why they put it. <laughs> well, Kingfish, all I got to say is that I has done decided to take this job. Now, Brother Crawford done got it for me through a friend of his at the Harlem Hospital, and it's a good job. And, well, I'm going to work, January the 1st. Well, and I guess you know what you're doing. I just hope that you ain't doing all this on the repulse of the minute. That's all I hope. Yeah, well, you see, Kingfish, I... Wait a minute. Come uh, in, Lightning. Uh, how you there, Lightning? Yeah. Well, hello there, Miss Andy. Uh, Miss Andy, this package come for you over at the large hall. Oh, thank you, Lightning. I wonder what's in it. Well, don't crowd me, Lightning. Yeah, Go. stand back, Lightning. Me and Andy can open it. Uh, hmm. A pair of bookends. A uh, bookends? Uh, what are they for, Miss Andy? Well, to keep books from falling down. Oh, that's a good invention, all right. Uh, here's the card. Thanks for everything, Mrs. Henry Van Porter. Uh, what you thinking, your friend? Oh, I kind of helped Henry to sell an insurance policy. Uh, what in the world is you going to do with glass bookends, then? Well, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. Mm -hmm. Confidentially and under your hat and just between the two of us, I'm going to try to get the money back on them. <laughs> oh, you're going to exchange them, huh? Yeah, you know, if there's one thing that I hate, it's bookends. Well, you was right in taking back this present, then. Air all, you ain't got no use for bookends, is you? Nah. Kind of like a sandwich without nothing between the bread. <laughs> of course, I could keep my funny papers in between them, but that'd look like I was trying to put on the dog. Yeah, that's laying it on heavy, all right. 
Yeah. Tell you what, fellas, I'm going down to Pritchard's department store and change these things right now. I'll see you later. <laughs> Uh, pardon me, miss. I'd like to exchange these bookends. And what's wrong with them? I ain't got no book. Oh, I see. Uh, were these uh, a gift? Uh, yes, ma'am. Uh, uh, Mrs. Van Poulter sent them to me. Oh, yes. Now, you're sure you don't want these? After all, they're imported from San Diego. Yeah, well, as far as I was concerned, they can send them back on the next boat. <laughs> well, you see, on sales merchandise... Oh, but, 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 uh, hello, hello, Mrs. Van Porter. Oh, uh, what are you doing here? Aren't those the bookends I bought here for you yesterday? Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, that's right, that's right. You did give me these. I, I was just telling the sales lady here. Ha, <laughs> uh, ha, How crazy I is about them, and did I want to buy three more pair? But you said you wanted to no, get... No, I say I want to get the three more pair, Miss. Well, I guess the customer's always right. Uh, yeah. Go ahead, miss. I'll stand here till you finish waiting on him. Yeah. So here I is now, Kingfish, with four pair of bookends. Yeah, they're really piling up on you, ain't they? Yeah. Uh, they wouldn't give you money back at the store, huh? No. I hid in the men's shoe department till Mrs. Van Porter left. Then I went over there and tried to get my money back. Oh, well, what'd they say? They say it was all sale merchandise, and when that stuff go out, it stays out. Well, don't worry, and I think everything will turn out all right for you. Yeah, well, it sure is nice of you to bring me over to this swap shop here, Kingfish. Yeah, well, I'm glad to do it, and uh, uh, come on, let's go on in. Yeah, how are you there, Sam? Uh, hello, Kingfish. Uh, Sam, my friend here, Mrs. Brown, uh, wants to talk to you about some bookends. Well, bookends is pretty hard to get these days. You just can't find them. But I'll let you have a couple of pairs, three dollars a pair. No, no. Oh, no. I, I don't want to buy none. I want to sell you some. Oh, well. In that case, the market is flooded with them. <laughs> Tell you what I'll do. I'll give you ten cents a pair for them. Uh, that market show got flooded fast, didn't it? <laughs> yeah, that was a wave that come up there on this thing. Sure. Well, to tell you the truth, Kingfish, I'd rather swap stuff than to buy things for cash. Yeah, well, uh, why do you swap me for these full pair of bookends? Well, let me see now. Let me see what you might be able to use here now. How about this electric motor here? One quarter horsepower. A uh, quarter horsepower? Mm -hmm. What does that mean? Well, uh, electrical speaking, it means that it generates the power of a quarter of a horse. Oh, yeah. <laughs> kind of like a horse kicking with one leg, huh? <laughs> mm -hmm, that's right. What could I use the motor for? Oh, you can use a motor for hundreds of things. Yeah, well, uh, what would one thing be? Well, uh, one thing is, you, well, 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 a motor is good to have in case you want to make something go. Yeah, well, right now I ain't got nothing that needs going. <laughs> yeah, and uh, if you ain't got nothing that needs going, then you sure don't need nothing to make it go with. Mm -hmm. Well, how about a tennis racket? How would you put the motor on it? Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Just a plain tennis racket. It's still got most of the strings in it. Would you take that, Kingfish? Hmm. Hmm, yeah. Hmm, no. <laughs> hmm, no. <laughs> well, look here. How about a gas heater? No, no. I ain't got no gas in my room. Well, could you use a baby buggy? Now, uh, wait a minute. Don't be silly. Oh, uh, hey, and wait a minute. You could use a baby now, buggy. Now, wait a minute, Kingfish. Uh, wheel I... out the buggy, Sam. It's a deal. But listen, Kingfish. Shut I... up. Pardon the deal. <laughs> Give the man the book in. Okay, okay. Here you is, Sam. And uh, that'll be two dollars swapping charges. Uh, oh, two dollars, huh? Mm-hmm. All right. Uh, anything to get rid of them bookends. Here you is. Thank you. Uh, bring the baby bug in. Come on, Andy. Okay. Now, listen, Kingfish. What is I going to do with a baby buggy? Now, look here. We done made a great deal, Andy. I was talking to Slim Johnson last night. And him and his wife has been looking high and low for a used baby buggy. I think they'll pay as high as eight dollars for it. Yeah, well, this thing ain't in too good a shape. Come on, Andy, we'll call up Slim. There's a phone in this cigar store right here. Okay. Well, hey, look here. There's Brother Crawford standing in front of the cigar store. Oh, the hello there, Brother Crawford. How is you? Yeah. Well, hello there, boys. Uh, what are you doing here? Oh, we was just down to the swap shop and got this baby buggy that we're going to try to sell to somebody. Say, by the way, Brother Crawford, I want to thank you for getting me that job. And someday I'm going to do something for you. 
Yes, Sandy, I'm glad you will. Yeah, then it tells me here that uh, it's going to happen January the 1st at the Harlem Hospital. That's right, but don't thank me, Andy. My wife suggested that I recommend you for the job. She suggested that the day before she left to visit her mother. Yeah. Uh, see, uh, what is you hanging around here for, Brother Crawford? I am waiting for somebody. I'm a little early. Well, listen, Brother Crawford, we got to go inside here and make a phone call. Would you mind keeping your eye on this baby buggy for a second? No, not if you're not too long. <laughs> Well, I got to be running along now, Amos. Uh, nothing else new, huh? Uh, no, except I was riding along on the streetcar this morning, and I see Brother Crawford standing in front of a cigar store with a baby buggy. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's right. Me and the kingfish run into him there. Uh, tell me, Andy, uh, when is it going to happen? January 1st at the Harlem Hospital. <laughs> well, I'm sure glad to hear that. Is it a secret? No, no, you can tell anybody you want to. Spread the good news all around. So long, Amos. <laughs> Oh, what's new around town, Amos? Oh, nothing much except that Crawford's is going to have a baby. A baby? When? January the 1st at the Harlem Hospital. Well, Sapphire, just between you and me, the Crawford's is going to have a blessed event. No! Yeah, Brother Andy, I just heard big news. Yeah, what is the news, Kingfish? The Crawford is going to have a baby. Well, why is it that I is always the last one to hear about something like that? <laughs> yes, sir, my wife told me it's going to happen around January the 1st at the Harlem Hospital. Yeah, well, now that show is a coincidence. You know I'm going to start working in that same hospital on that same day. Yeah, well, be careful, Andy, and don't let the baby see you working. No use letting a young baby get a shock like that, you know. <laughs> After Brother Crawford was seen standing on the corner watching the baby buggy for Andy, who had received it in exchange for his bookends at the swap shop, word spread like wildfire through Harlem that the Crawfords are having a baby. That's what Andy and the Kingfish are discussing now in Andy's office. So, Andy, when I hear that Brother Crawford's wife was driving home tonight from visiting the kinfolks, I told my wife I thought it'd be nice if we all got together and give the Crawfords a surprise baby shower. Yeah, well, I was back at the thing 100%, Kingfish. After all, the Crawfords was pretty nice to me, getting that job for me. Yeah, yeah I figure I kind of ought to zip a cake. Uh, when, uh, when is the shower going to be? Uh, tonight, Andy. The bad luck sunk that uh, we ought to work fast on the thing. Yeah, she done uh, told everybody not to say nothing about it. Yeah, well, wait a minute, here. The shower's going to be tonight. I better hurry up and get a present. Uh, come on, we'll shoot downtown to Pritchard's department store. Well, wait a minute, and uh, Slim backed out on the deal. Uh, why don't you give Crawford's the baby buggy? Oh, no. I'm going to buy him something brand new. Come on. <laughs> Go right in, Miss Rogers. Mr. Pritchard is expecting you. Thank you. Oh, <laughs> come in, Miss Rogers. <clears throat> yes, sit down. Thank you. Oh, um, how long have you been with our organization, Miss Rogers? Two years? Two years? Why, well, surely, Mr. Pritchard, you remember 1938 when I was the girl who won the Pritchard Award for Customer Approach? Fourth floor? Rear? Oh, <laughs> oh. Yes, of course. Well, I just wanted to tell you, Miss Rogers, that starting today, you are leaving bookends and bric-a-brac and going into baby clothes. Baby clothes? Yes. The reason we have to make the transfer is this, Miss Rogers. Our bookend and bric-a-brac business has fallen off due to priorities. While, on the other hand, baby clothes... Oh, I know. The stork doesn't need a priority. He just comes in on a wing and a prayer. <laughs> but, gee, Mr. Pritchett, I don't know anything about baby clothes. I realize that. That's why I want you to go up there as soon as possible and acquaint yourself with the stock sizes and all that. Well, I'll do the best I can. Mm. Oh, and uh, one more thing, Miss Rogers. It uh, might be advisable for you to leave the impression with your customers that you are a mother with uh, children of your own. Now, wait a minute. Don't you think enough has happened to me for one day? 
Yes, but the uh, customers seem to place more value in the advice of someone with uh, experience. Okay, maybe the change will be good for me. At least I'll meet some new faces. Uh, miss, uh, can you take care of us? No, you don't. If you're bringing back bookends, go down to the first floor. Uh, no, ma'am. No, 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 miss, that ain't it, uh... Uh, here, here, what? We want uh, something for a baby. Yeah. Oh, for a baby. Well, well, let's see what we've got here. Now, um, how about something like this? Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's pretty, all right. Look, yeah, that sure is. Look at that. Yeah. that. That is pretty. Yeah. Every baby ought to have one of them. I'll say. Yeah. Look. Uh. Uh. What is it? <laughs> Do you mean to say you don't know what this is? Uh, no, ma'am. No, I don't know what this neither. Well, you've seen babies before, haven't you? Oh, sure, yeah, we seen babies, all right. And you have no idea at all what this thing is? No, ma'am. Mm. Well, that's too bad, because I like to know what it is myself. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, uh, look here, look here, it say here on the sign. Yeah, read that out loud, what does it say there? B-A-S, bassinet. Yeah, now what's a bassinet? Yeah, well, it looked like here to me it does a play and work a basket with some pink silk lining in it there. Yeah, I guess that's for a little girl around five years old. Maybe she delivers her mother's washing in it. <laughs> yeah, they sure do start them out young, don't they? Yeah. Uh, excuse me, miss, but as you show you as the right person to wait on us, seem like to me that you don't know much about babies or what they wear. Are you kidding? I've got children of my own. Six of them. Yeah, I forgot for a moment. Oh, uh, you forgot you had them? Uh, yeah, that ain't uh, the type of thing that usually slips a mother's mind, is it? Well, the babies are so much younger than I am that we don't have very much in common. <laughs> I love the rascals, all seven of them. Seven? Uh, you say you had six? Well, uh, their father's a rascal, too. <laughs> now, come on, let's get going. How old is the baby you want something for? Well, you see, uh, Miss, it ain't born yet. Uh, some friends of ours is going to have a baby, and we're giving them a baby shower. We want to get something, though, that the baby will be able to use right after it's born. Well, how about this kitty car here? That would be just the thing. I could still see my little girl Gwendolyn when she was only two weeks old, whizzing around the block in one of those kitty cars. <laughs> Uh, you say whizzing around the block and this when she was two weeks old? Remarkable, child. Yeah, well, I guess I is a little old-fashioned, but, uh, I can't have had an idea that all babies stayed in bed for the first four or five months. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that just shows how much guys know about babies. <laughs> uh, yes, well, how old is your little girl? Uh, Gwendolyn is just past three. Yeah, just about ready to drive her own car by now. <laughs> Hey, uh, this little sweater here might be something. I wonder what size we ought to get in that. Well, it's going to be for a newborn baby. I guess it would depend on the weight. How much do newborn babies weigh, miss? Well, uh, they usually run around um, eight or nine pounds. Yeah. Well, what size do you think we ought to take, then? I'll, uh, I'll figure it out for you. Yeah. I weigh 120, and I take a size 36. I'll do a little dividing here. Now, if I weighed 60 pounds, that'd be half of 36. I'd mm -hmm. take an 18. 30 pounds would take a 9. 15 pounds, 4 and a half. So that's not a half. Yep, I think that does it. Mm -hmm. uh, what size should we take? Two and seven tenths. <laughs> uh, all right, then uh, we'll take one of them. Yeah. I'll give it to you right now. Let me see here. There's uh, ones, fours, threes. Oh, wait a minute. Two, seven. I'm sorry. We're all out of two and seven tenths. Mm, this is going to be some shower we give him. Yeah. Right now, it looks more like a drizzle. <laughs> now, now, look here. The store's going to close in five minutes, and I've got a heavy day tonight, so if you're going to get a gift for that baby, you better hurry up. Uh, yes, well, what, what else is there? Well, um, how about a pair of these nice little booties? Or a, or a crib, or a blanket. Uh, say... A baby buggy. Oh, no, no, no. We already has got a baby buggy, man. Yes, but didn't you say the baby hadn't been born yet? Yeah, that's right. It's coming January the 4th at the Harlem Hospital. Did you say it? Yeah, that's what you call them until the day they arrive. <laughs> uh, sure, of course, later on, it's going to be a boy or a girl. Yeah, but right now, it's a it. Aha! <laughs> uh -huh. Did it ever 
occur to you that there might be two babies? Twins? Well, uh... A I... fine thing. Two babies and one baby buggy. But, uh, you see... I can see the mother now going down the street, wheeling one of the babies in a buggy. But what happens to the other poor little kid? He walks! <laughs> <laughs> Well, uh, I, I didn't mean to... And to... how are you going to feel? You who could have made it possible for both of these little children to ride. I didn't do nothing to the kingfish. <laughs> <laughs> and I ain't even speaking to you. I don't like you. And if you don't buy this baby buggy, why, just think of what people will say. Yeah, well, I guess I better. I don't want to have people talking about me. Sold one baby buggy. <laughs> Well, folks, it won't be long now. Oh, yes, Amos, the Crawfords ought to be here any second now. Uh, yes, and remember, we're yeah, all that supposed that to have a surprise when they come in. Yes, and uh, they will be surprised because they don't know that we knows nothing about it. Don't all the gifts look pretty there? Oh, yeah. yeah, they sure do, Sapphire. You know, Kingfish, I kind of glad Slim didn't want that baby buggy because with two buggies now, I'm giving the Crawfords the nicest present they're going to get. Yes, and I think that crayon set that I finally bought for the baby ought to make a hit, too. Yeah. Oh, wait a minute. Yeah. Quiet, everybody. There it is. Now, quiet. Yeah. Now, look here. When I let them in, you know what we're going to holler. Here we go. Surprise! Surprise! Surprise? What is this? Yes, what is it? It is now a birthday or anniversary. Brother Crawford, ain't no use for you and your wife pretending no longer. We knows all about it. Ha, ha, ha. This certainly is thrilling. Yes, Brother Crawford, I understand your new income tax deduction is due to arrive around January the 1st. I don't have the faintest idea what you're talking about. Oh, quit your kidding, Brother Crawford. I can't wait till the day I comes up to your house and hear you saying, Coochie, coochie, coo. Ha, 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 ha. And would you mind telling me what reason I would have for saying... Coochie, coochie, coo. Uh, Brother Crawford. Uh, what is it, Andy? Goo, goo. <laughs> <laughs> I wish you would tell me and my husband what this is all about. We fail to see any humor in it. Well, I guess we're just going to have to make you fess up. Well, here he is. This is for me and Ruby. This little pink knitted sweater. Oh, oh yeah. That's... This is a joke. How would you expect my wife to get into that? Oh. <laughs> Still playing dumb. Still playing dumb, huh? Listen, we might as well get right down to business then. To the little heir of the Crawford fortunes, the new offsprings that is due to arrive around January the 1st, I would like to present these two baby buggies from Andrew H. Brown so that one baby won't have to walk. <laughs> baby buggies? This is the craziest thing I ever heard of. We are not having any baby. Oh, you ain't? No, we are not. Hmm. Wait a minute. Hey, wait a minute, Chad. Well, listen, you mean to say that you ain't having any baby at all? Certainly we are not. Brother Crawford, you can't do this to us after all the trouble we've done, Gonda. <laughs> Eyes down, Kingfish. On top of everything else, Brother Crawford doesn't fix it, so I won't get that job now, neither. All right, uh, boys. I'll take care of you now. What was it you wanted? Uh, Sam, I ain't got no use for these two baby buggies, and I want to swap them for something else. You got nothing new since we was here? No, Andy. Same old stuff. Yeah, well, I don't know what to take. There wasn't nothing here I wanted before. Well, why don't you try the grab box? Grab yeah, uh, explain to him. What is that? Yeah. Well, that's like a grab bag. Everything's all wrapped up, and you might make a great swap. And on the other hand, maybe you won't do so good, but at least you'll get your money's worth. Well, that's for me. That's a deal. Take the baby buggies. Here I go. Uh, just a minute, Andy. There's a $2 swapping charge. Oh. All right. Here you is. Yeah, well, grab one of the boxes, Dan. Yeah. Hmm. At least I got a heavy one. Yeah, Andy, open it up. Let's see what you got there. Yeah, what'd you get, Andy? What'd you get? Hmm. There's them full pair of bookends again. High as we got... Uh... 
Join us again next week at this same time for the Amos and Andy Show, at which time the boy's guest will be that self-styled expert on marriage problems, Mr. Robert Benchley. Our thanks to Miss Ginger Rogers for being our guest tonight. The Amos and Andy Show is shortwave to all our armed forces overseas. This is Harlow Wilcox, and before we say goodnight, I have one further important reminder. We all know that the beautiful Christmas seals, which grace millions of letters and packages at this time of the year, are more than mere decoration that they are in reality the expression of the generosity of a nation's heart. For the Christmas seals you buy are among the most effective weapons against tuberculosis. But there's an interesting and not too well-known story behind the fight against the Great White Plague. Did you know that the war waged against tuberculosis owes much of its success to the veterinary profession? Yes, not only did veterinarians join with the medical profession in efforts to stamp out tuberculosis in man and beast, but they have pioneered many advances in the scientific attack on the disease, including the eradication of bovine tuberculosis. We can thank the veterinarians for the safe, pure milk we drink. Through their efforts, the tubercular cow is nearly as extinct as the dodo bird. I just thought you'd be interested in that sidelight on the organized campaign to stamp out human suffering. Veterinarians and physicians on the one hand, you and your purchases of Christmas seals on the other. What a privilege you have to do your share in this great fight merely by buying Christmas seals. Thank you and good night. This is the National.